so we go back to lib avif gdk pix buff yep so we can do this one now Uh, what are we hoping to get back to? LibRSVG, right, okay. So, paste that in and extract. Right, so I've got a few extra options here. Um, three of them for external dependencies, not part of the book. And the other two are just explaining settings that are being set. So we can copy and paste that as it is. And that's it. The package does come with a test suite, but it requires gtest, which is not part of BLFS. So there's no point in running that, obviously. So we'll install it and it says the AV1 format needs to be added to the loader's cache. So we do that with that command and that's that done. So we're back now to lib rsvg. So go back to this tab. I'm going to rerun the config. And I can't remember what failed now, but obviously that, oh, it was a uh, Pixman, I think it was. Or Pixbuff maybe, uh, let's have a quick look. Yeah, GDK Pixbuff, which we've obviously got installed now. <clears throat> so that's okay so everything looks good there let's run make Okay, so that's built. Let's run some checks. Okay, that's all passed. So let's now install. Uh, why have we got an error there? Uh, 
cargo command not found. That's weird. CD minus E. Okay, so it's obviously in the path that's not being sent. By the minus E in this case. Right. Let's become rude. So I've got to explicitly become root to get that path and then I'll have to change to this directory. I'm not sure why um, the whole environment not, is not being passed. I thought that's what the minus C did. Do just check that preserve environment preserve their existing environment variables. The security policy may return an error if the user does not have permissions to preserve the environment. So that should work. So path. So it's passing it in, but for some reason. That command is not working. Um, I wonder if something like that might do it. Yes, it has done. Yeah, it seems like something in path or something in the scripts of the make file are spawning another shell or another environment uh, that's losing that setting somehow. And by putting in path equals path and explicitly making that get passed into make I think. I think that's maybe what's happening so if you get the same issue then that that will fix it okay if you install the package onto your system using desktop mode an important file was not installed and should be copied and not generated right so we didn't use the desktop So that's libr svg built. So I couldn't build it when I wanted to. So I'm going to have to move that to be built now. I'd originally got it to build just after Valor, but obviously it didn't work then. So that's in the right position, and it says rebuild after Xorg fonts um, because there is that dependency there for tests. Um, it's 
So we had 63 tests and they all passed anyway, but I guess there'll be some more tests that will test uh, against the fonts. So now let's tidy that up. I'll shut that down. We're back to GDK Pix buff and Right, libris reduce runtime dependency, so it's not needed for the compile. Um, and I've got a note for GDK PixBuff to rebuild after Web WebP PixBuff loader. And that's a runtime dependency. Right, so it doesn't actually need to be rebuilt um, because it's a runtime dependency. But this needs libwebp, which, yeah, starts to get involved with some of the other graphics packages. Yeah, and it requires Mesa. So what I do need to make sure is that I actually build WebP as at some point to make sure that it's available for this package. Um, so I need to note that somewhere. Let's stick it down here. I'll just make a handwritten note. WebP picks buff loader after Lib web p. So then that will complete the requirements. Well, it is optional, but um, it will complete requirements for this package. Um, and it just says runtime dependency, so we don't need to compile that. So I'll remove that message. So we don't need to rebuild GDK PixBuff. Um, so back to this Pango. Did we actually build Pango in the end? Don't look like it. Uh, wrong window. Let's try that one. Just search a spreadsheet. Oh, yes, rebuild after sysprof. Okay, so high color theme next. So that's straightforward. As a recommended package. Very simple. Done. Okay, next we've got GTK Plus again, and Cups, I think, has got lots of dependencies. So we'd need that. I think we've got libusb, Pam, we've got xdg, we'd need Vahi, libpaper, php, we've done Python 2, and these two after the installation. The dbus gd, I've got see this pop. Right, let's get into the realms of desktops. That one we can install. Yeah, GTK, and I think I'll probably 
and required color day um what I would be tempted to do is to install cups as it is and then reinstall it when all of the dependencies have been built at a later point which is probably you know desktop time um so that might be worth doing and no extra themes that needs gtk so that I think what I'll have to do is to reinstall GTK 2 plus after, no, sorry, GTK plus version 2 after these two have been installed. Um, yeah, and the test must be run from an X window session, so they won't run at the moment. Yeah, so I think I'll go for installation of this package now and put in that it's got to be rebuilt after um, cups and gnome themes extra and um, xorg as well because it needs a a graphical interface to test. So let's download the package. So this is GTK Plus version 2. object introspection was installed after ATI core and GDK buff and or Pango those packages have to be rebuilt before this package can be built right I don't think it was I think object introspection was built right it's number 169 on my list and to look for the others because they could be anywhere so look for at dash spi2 so did i say 169 oh that was built afterwards uh no sorry it was built before ati at spi2 core and it was definitely built after gdk picks buff because we've only just done that about five or six packages ago and the same for Pango, so that's okay. So it wasn't installed, so we don't have to rebuild them. So to install it, we've got a sed command. And this is what all the commands, there's no explanations apart from enabling GTK doc if you wish to build the API documentation, so I don't. So I won't put that in. Even though we've got GTK doc now, just from the configuration. And run make. Okay, so we can 
try and make check, but it's almost certainly going to fail. Okay, there was some red there. It doesn't look like there's much being tested either. So we've got one pass there. There's a failure there, alias files check. So I'm not really too bothered about that. There's no tests run there. There's two there that passed, one there that passed. So it's only a token effort. Um, if you install the package onto your system desktop method. No, we didn't. So let's just do make install. That's done for this attempt. We've got some configuration. Uh, themes, change your OG to capture and looks. Icon theme can be used to change icons that appear on application toolbar. If you have installed a theme such as themes, extra or GTK engines, or GTK plus icon themes, you can set your preferences. So we haven't set anything yet, so I'm not going to set that. And we haven't got a graphical environment anyway. But next time round, I will be setting these. And this is for the current user anyway, as you can see. Um, but this here will make the option uh, system wide. Okay, so let's tidy that up. And close that down. So back to Pixman. Pixman has now got GTK Plus installed. It's got libpng. Let's just check if this is a rebuild or if it was a failure. Oh yes, it is a rebuild. So I'm going to mark down the fact that I'm going to rebuild it and put Pixman into the list and I'll mark that it has been rebuilt. So let's extract Pixman, CD Pixman. No options, just copy and paste. Ninja test. Passed. So let's see, do you see? Ninja install. So that's fully complete. So now we can move to Cairo. Let's check this is a rebuild or not. Now I've got a note to say to rebuild object introspection. After a couple of other than that, uh, no, that's interesting. That was uh, oh, so if we reinstall object introspection, we'll have to rebuild these three again. And object introspection is marked down for rebuild after Cairo GJS. Well, about five or six different packages. So that's something I have to bear in mind. Um, but make a note of that as well. So then after object intro. 
object introspection is installed uh, AT SPI2 core GDK pix buff and Pango need to be reinstalled as per GTK plus version 2 requirements. Right, so that's getting quite quite complicated now. Uh, right, so uh, so Pango, what was I doing? Pango, uh, Cairo, sorry. Cairo needs to be rebuilt after Ghost Script and various GTKs. Oh yes, and Poplar. So basically, the some of these have been built now, but not all of them. Yeah, I'm not going to do that one yet. Um, Kairos for tests. So I think as Cairo has been installed at the moment, even though it's not completely installed, um, I'll shut that down. Uh, why, why have we got these two here? Oh, this is for LibRSVG probably. Oh, this is waiting for the rebuild of free type. That's probably what that is. Let's look up free type. Now we've installed librsvg. Yeah, I've got reinstall after half bars, which we've done. Reinstall after half bars. So I've done that. Let's mark that as complete. And then rebuild after half buzz and live RSVG. And then rebuild after live, live R, RSVG. Okay, so this will be the last time that I rebuild free type Uh, because then it will be fully complete. So I'm going to rebuild it now. As it's complete. So let's extract free type one last time. Extract the documentation again. We'll make sure we do a complete build. Make sure it's all there. So we don't need to put in or remove any options. So we can put this in as it is. And make install as the root. And like I say, we'll just, it's probably been done before, but to ensure that the build is complete, we'll just perform all the steps. And that is now complete. Shut that down. Graphite was needing text live. We've installed the graphite font. Let's look for graphite in the list. We 
rebuild after tax live. Yeah, so I've got a note to rebuild this. So I think I can get rid of that. We've, we've done the font. That's probably why I left that there. It was highlighted. So I'll get rid of that. So we've got libdrm now. Okay, I've just got to rebuild Cairo after libdrm, so it's just another dependency of Cairo um, that will be completed when we come to rebuild it properly. So um, let's just check. We've got CMake, we've got DocBook, Libatomic Cops. Yeah, we've got all the dependencies for this, so we can now build libdrm. link okay what we've we got here so there's nothing we'd want to change there so we'll just copy and paste the configure and build commands run some tests that's okay and install so that's the DRM so finally we're back to Mesa where I started quite a while ago we're currently I've built 229 packages so far and uh, what was on for me is a cursor. So that was package number 72. So that's about 150 packages we've had to build in the meantime. Not have to build, that's perhaps wrong because, as I say, a lot of the packages we could have got away with not building, but knowing that they're going to be required later on anyway. Um, it's probably just as well that we build them now to save even more rebuilds and to be quite honest I'm surprised how many there are already to rebuild. Um, right, so that's only the second requirement. We've still got Mako to build but that's okay because I believe that's just a little Python module. Yeah, it looks like it is. So let's do that one next. So build it. And install. And then py test to test it. That's all passed. So that's complete. So libva to provide VA API support for some Gallium drivers. Notice there is a circular dependency. You must build VA libva first without AGL and GLX support. Install this package and then rebuild libva. Okay, so let's do libva first. So I put a note rebuild after. Lisa. You can see it's a recommendation there. Um, XOR build environment we've got. Uh, the VA API driver suitable for the hardware on your system. VA API for Intel GPUs provided with Haswell CPUs or earlier. And Intel Media for Intel GPUs provided with broader CPUs or later. Mesa provided the providing the R six hundred Radeon Nuvo VA API drivers and supported NGU uh, NVIDIA GPUs. 
and the circular dependency. So this is the circular dependency we're starting to resolve now. Um, so these are runtime. Um, does it mention them here? I think that gets resolved a little bit later. Uh, is it here? Drivers. This is now. All oh, right, okay. So they're just relying on um, what they call it the K. I can't remember what to call it now, something kernel modules. So previously there was these device dependent X drivers, um, which are specific drivers that were used for driving the input and output hardware. Um, KVM, I think they call it. KVM, that was it. Um, So, if your GPU supports 3D acceleration, these are provides game drive for utilizing its 3D capability. Right, okay, so I'm looking for something that might not need to be used anymore. Um, so it's just this libvpa, uh, libva, sorry, Intel VA API driver. And this is the one we want. Multimedia libraries and drivers. Right, because things have changed now, I'm pretty sure previously, in previous versions, this installation of this driver was as part of the XOR build. As things have changed now, it's mentioned here in case it's not mentioned anywhere else. Um, and despite the fact it's a runtime requirement, I'm going to install the driver for the Intel chip that I'm using. Um, obviously, you're going to have to do something different depending on what graphics you have um, looks like Mies is sufficient just for the AMD Strat Radeon chips and if it's an NVIDIA you want to support then um, well as you can see that's off the BLFS website so island that needs graph is there's an option so that needs to be rebuilt so we need to build that as well. Uh, Intel GPU tools, I've, I use that occasionally on Gen 2. It's quite a useful thing to show you information about the Intel GPU, such as I think temperature and process load and so on. Um, but as it's off the BLFS book, I won't be installing it here. Uh, Right, so I need to do this one first. 
Intel Media. Intel GMM Lib. And that requires CMake. So let's start with this one. Uh, so let's not actually libva next. So fetch this package. So that's extracted a different package, which is what that note's about. Um, test suite is normally run by make unless the D run test suite equals no is passed. So there's no explicit test to run, as it says it's part of it, part of the build. You have 28 disabled tests, but apart from that, it looks like that has run the tests and they've passed. So, sudo minus e make install, and that's done. So, Intel Media next. So Broadwell is anything from generation five, if I remember right, I think the Haswell's a generation four. So this machine's a generation 11, so it's well past that cutoff boundary. So I don't need to look it up to be sure it's so far since then. It's got to be the right version. Um, but if you are unsure, um, I think there's a Gen 2 web page which is quite useful for stuff about Intel graphics. You type in Gen 2 Intel, uh, it's this link here. It's got this nice table which gives you information about um, the different graphics versions. So this generation is the generation of the video card, not the generation of the um, chip. So if we go to that link, Haswell, you can see that the Haswell is the fourth generation core. So if your Intel chip is that generation or earlier, then it will need the um, older Intel VA API driver, whereas obviously anything newer than that uh, will use the driver that I'm installing, the media driver Intel, but as I say it's quite useful because at a glance you've got this table here which tells you, um, well the video cards is to do Gen 2 specifically, but it shows you what support it's got, so Haswell has got version 1 for example of support and it's partial I think is what the yellow means. Um, but as you can see from uh, Broadwell onwards, which is generation five of the chip or generation eight of the graphics, the GPU that's built into the chip, um, there's full support for all of these, but obviously at varying versions. So that's that. Uh, so if we go back to Intel Media, we've extracted it so I need to go into it all oh, right so this has got requirement libva itself Let's reread this. Right. 
So it says rebuild libva first without EG on GLX support, install this package, and then rebuild LVA. Uh, libva, sorry. Um, right, yeah, I think what I have to do then is to build libva first. Oh, yeah, it does say these are runtime. Okay. So libva is first. <clears throat> so let me just go around my running order. So libva next. Did I extract this? Uh, no, we haven't downloaded it yet. So let's fetch package so just an initial build to get leave lib VA into the system So now I'm going to install Intel Media. Uh, all right, we need to check the kernel. So let's do su minus. and device drivers graphics support is some way down about halfway down have I passed it yep Put drive support there it is there and once looked direct rendering manager is set and also Intel which is also set so that's okay I don't need to do anything there this package takes a long time to build because it compiles code specific to each individual generation of Intel GPUs for a variety of media codecs if you know the model of your Intel GPU you can pass the D gen 8 9 10 11 12 MTL equals off option to the CMake command but leaving the option for your GPU out Note that the gen number here is the generation of the GPU, not the CPU. For example, the Intel i7 1065G7 CPU shipping 11th generation Intel GPU. The D Gen 8, 9, 10, 12. So they're missing out 11 there because that's the one they want to keep. Can be used. So the code specific to the other generations of Intel GPUs won't be built. Oh, right, okay. So this makes that Gen 2 page even more useful then because we need to know the generation of the GPU to utilize that to save time <clears throat> so as I say I've got uh, is it Tiger Lake I'm not sure now let's have a look at Tiger Lake yeah 11th generation So it's a Gen 12. So I need to copy that and leave out the 12. So let's try that. I'm taking a bit of a risk because it might not work, but given the information, it, it does tie up. It makes sense. Um, obviously, if I left all of them in there, then I imagine when it runs, the code runs, it'll just select the right driver, 
the right version. So what we've we got to do, we've got to add in all of that, but remove, in my case, I have to remove 12, obviously depending on what version you have, if you're building for a later Intel, um, it's going to be different. So I'll run that to configure the build and then run make. Oh, well, that's interesting. That's failed right at the very end. There's no indication as to why. Oh, there's a error there. Media interfaces until the H. Got the Intel GMM lib installed. So let's 
check. It doesn't say this installed any headers. Yeah, it was definitely installed. Now, whether it's because Mesa should actually be installed next before this gets installed. Uh, I've lost that error now. Where is it gone? There it is. Let's have a search for that error. There's nothing specific. Uh, let's try Google, see if that returns anything more relevant. No. Okay. Um, in that case, let's have another look. So we've got libvo installed. The build environments, yeah, these are all installed. set up um, the only thing I can suggest trying is to build without this option to turn off the single version Let's try running make once more. I doubt if it'll work if it's failed once. Yeah, it's not gonna. Yeah, I'll just all I can do is just try to build it again. But without the option to turn them off, that's uh, quite strange. I'll just copy it. It's obviously going to take a lot longer now as well, uh, which is a bit unfortunate. Hopefully, it won't crash this time.
Well, that seems to have taken a, about the same amount of time, actually, so that's quite strange. Just going to check to see if I did put in the right options. Yeah, I thought I might have left a, a comma in there, but no, that looks... Okay, so I'm not quite sure how that saved time. It didn't, so it didn't really notice that it was any different. Uh, but never mind. Let's do sudo minus e make install. Main thing is it ran, so that's all we want at the end of the day. So that's the media driver for Intel. Um, LibVA. This will also need my R oh, right, okay, Wayland. So Wayland will need graphics. So I'm going to install this as well so it's ready for the next iteration of LibVA. So this needs to be rebuilt after graph is. So documentation is false to prevent the building of API documentation. That's okay. Copy and paste that. And we can run some tests. And Ninja install. That's done. Okay, so now I'm going to install, let's get rid of that, Misa. So it recommends that we build libvd pal drivers. I'm pretty sure that's not needed for Intel. Um, so it's supported by NVIDIA. S3 graphics cards and AMD. Intel does not offer VD power drivers. They only support their VA API. It is, however, to use, possible to use Intel's VA API drivers by way of libvd power VAGL. So let's see if that's part of BLFS. Oh, it is, it is in there, so then in that case, I will build it. Yeah, so I will build it. Uh, right, so let's get that up. Recommended runtime. So again, this is another one that needs a rebuild after Graph is in text live. So apart from that, we've got on oh no, our VD power needs to be 
build it first. So, libvidi pow, rebuild after graph viz, uh, and text live, and text live. Copy link address. So there's no extra options here. Just copy and paste that. Ninja test. Um, right, it says there's only one test for this package deal closing. It's known to fail on some systems. So it's not failed, but it's been skipped. So all we can do then is to install the package and there's no documentation because we haven't got Doxygen. So that's libvd pow. Let's install this Intel driver. Again, that needs to be rebuilt after GraphViz and TextLive. I think I'm going to make GraphViz and TextLive a priority to build when we've got the GUI up and running. Right, so let's copy that link. So copy and paste. Right. Uh, package. All oh, right. Okay. If I, am I doing this in the wrong order again? Oh, or is it because, let me see, this is quite confusing, this is, um, so libvd power in, have installed, Although it does say it's for uh, runtime, so arguably we don't have to install it now. Um, so maybe I do need to go back to Mesa and carry that on. Um, so let's uh, delete that line. I'll leave that up because I no need to install that uh, after libva. Get rid of that because we've done that one. So we'll come back to that Wayland protocols. We've got Wayland installed, so we can do this one next.
so that is built, that was quick. Ninja test, that's all good. And that's the package installed. That's why then the protocol's done. Uh, what's the next one? Lib unwind and LM sensors. Let's have a look at these. So let's do that one next then. first and this is rebuild after text live It seems we got stuck. I'll abandon that so we can get another connection. No. I'm not sure why that's not downloading. Let's see if we can find the package elsewhere. Yeah, the Oregon State University is a good place for, so there's where we're trying to download it now. Uh, let's try that one. No. Let's put FTP in. I thought this would be easy to, oh, that's the one we want. Yeah, this is it. So I'm looking for Lib Unwind. Oh, these are all the Bs, okay. So L, Lib Unwind. No, it's not there. Okay, so that's, I expected in the file while reading, so the connection failed. Uh, and there's no other link. Oh, is it? It's extremely slow. Um, let's see if we can find it on this. Oh, this is on BLFS 8.2. Oh, is it getting there? Yes, okay, it's found a mirror. Um, basically, on this Oregon University watch has gone to parent. Parent picked the right version, so that version there. Then L, and there's Lib Unwind there. And it's the correct version. Um, so, what I'm going to do is I'm going to check some of that just because there's some difficulty with it arriving. And yes, that matches what's in the book, so that's good. So configure and make. I 
mic check. And it says two tests, core dump and one, run core dump and one, and I fail. So they're the two we've got. So we can install the package. Let's live unwind. Next we've got LM sensors. I think this one will be good to do. Yep, that's not a problem. We've got which installed. So this is a uh, quite a useful um, package to have. It gives you some feedback of various parts of the hardware, uh, temperature sensors, and so on. Um, yeah, this is a good bit of advice. I think on Gen two they suggest setting all the hardware devices as modules rebuilding the kernel, booting that kernel, then looking to see which modules have been loaded and then going back into the kernel and just enabling those ones, um, which is probably a, quite a good way of doing it. There's a lot of work involved, but here they've given an example of what is probably the minimum that's needed to get some information. So um, I'm just going to do this just to save some time rather than building the kernel several times just to get maybe you know one or two sensors but doing what it says there to use a, a like a bootable distro dis distribution um to find out what sensors are on the system and what what's being used is a is a good way of doing it there is also a command which i don't mention running here called sensors detect which will pick up the sensors that are on the system and I believe that's in the way the Gen 2 use it that's the way they help that program to detect hardware um, so we can we can try that maybe see, see what it comes up with but let's <clears throat> look at the kernel first of all So I want to go to power management ACPI options. ACPI needs to be checked, which it is. And then battery. Well, this is a desktop machine, so battery is almost redundant really. But what I'll do is I'll put it in as a module because there's a possibility it might report other devices that have a battery in, for example, maybe a USB possibly. Um, so I'll leave that in as a, a module and thermal zone that's built in so I'll leave it like that then I'll go to device drivers NVMe support so this machine has got NVMe in it um, if your machine hasn't it's probably not worth turning on unless you've got an idea that you might be plugging in for example NVMe devices um, so that's selected obviously because we booted from it select hardware mon to star not m or it will not show up hardware monitoring right yes yeah, so that's also already checked um, and then we've got hardware monitoring support There. So these are all the options that Gen 2 recommends to turn on, run the sensors, detect, find out what's identified, and then just set those in the kernel and disable everything else. Um, let's just set what's mentioned here for the moment. So I'm not going to bother obviously with the AMD um, 
options, those three there, because this is an Intel machine. Um, Intel Core. So I'll turn that on. And I'm not going to bother with any other devices. Um, now this is an Asus machine, so what I might do is, let's just have a quick look at these. I'm going to set these to modules and see if any of these get set. So 80k that one is. This one's WMI, but it does actually say Asus. So if none of these come up, then I'll just remove these from the kernel. So effectively, I'm going to rebuild possibly twice. So yes, I want to save that. I want to rebuild the kernel. So that there's a good chance that this might rebuild the majority of the kernel. And no, it hasn't. It's just built the specific part, which is good. So it's a nice quick build. So make modules install CP arch x86 underscore 64 boot pz image I uh, didn't rent the boot did I uh, mount boot so that goes into boot as vm linus cp system dot map to boot system dot map and cp dot config to boot config and I'm going to come out of that connection and I'll come out of root there and SSH back in explicitly as the root. And then what I shall do is to do reboot and Lock out and wait for this machine to boot. So it's just shutting down now. Okay, I've got the logo, the grub boot screen, and we're booting again. Okay, so that's come back up. So I'll log back in. And I'm going to do an LS mod. So none of those, the thermal module is loaded, but uh, none of those ASUS modules are loaded at the moment. So now let's go and build the package. Um, so we can't put this in because we're not going to build our RRD tool. So we'll just copy and paste the make command. That was quick. So sudo minus e su install the package. And that's done. So if we run sensors detect, oops, okay, maybe it's got to be done as root. Yeah, it has to be done as root. So it's come up with what the machine is and the kernel and the processor. And it says it helps you determine which kernel modules you need to load to use LM sensors most effectively. It's generally safe and recommended to accept the default answers to all questions unless you know what you're doing. So I don't think, although it is possible, I don't think I've ever found this program to lock up or misbehave in any way, um, even going against the defaults. 
uh, but it does warn you with each option in case you do uh, potentially have problems. Um, so I'm going to accept this first one. This is embedded sensors. As you can see, it's found the Intel core temp sensor, which has already been set. Do you want to scan for super IO sensors? Let's scan that. It's found Nuvoton NCT679D super IO sensor. Um, some servers implement IPMI. So do you want to scan for that? Yes. Didn't find that. Then I supports. Doesn't recommend that. There's probably no I supports, but it shouldn't do any harm to do yes. And as expected, it hasn't found anything. Um, I2C, this machine has got I2C. I think most machines have these days. So let's scan that. Okay, so it tried to load an I2C module and it didn't manage to do that. Now I think it's probably because I've built that in. That could be why. Um, I915 GM bus DPA. So let's try that. Can't open it. So it's obviously trying some different connections here. As I say, normally just doing yes to all of these doesn't cause any problems. It shows you it can't load them anyway. Press enter. So the confidence nine is that that's a high confidence of, as to what it's found. Uh, it says it's found that is already built in. And then it says it's found this NCT6675. And do you want to generate that config file? Do yes to that. And you should now start an M sensor service to load the required kernel modules. Um, so let's type in LM. Was it sensors? Oh yeah, sensors will show you the sensors. Um, but I'll probably need to enable this one in the kernel. Let's not do this at the moment. Let's go to the kernel. Uh, so CD sources PLFS. Uh, sorry. Make menu config. And what I'll do is I'll look for this NCT6775. Yep, there it is. And, and it's not set to enabled at the moment. So I need to enable that and rebuild the kernel to allow that to, to work. So if I press 1 to get, jump directly to that, I'll do the help. Yes, support for these various devices. So I'll set that as a module and just go back and see which specific one it is. 6798D, 6798D. So let's just do help again. 6798D, it's not actually listed there. Oh, and compatible Super IO chips. So what I can do is search for exit that six seven nine eight. All right, it hasn't found, so it's not mentioned. But this program knows that that is the driver for it. So I'm happy that that will be the right one. We can check it by going directly to it. Uh, Hardware monitoring. There's the Intel Core one, which I've built in. And the platform driver. Um, in fact, I might just build it in. So rebuild this again. OK, 
my mount boot right the default for Linux of scratch is not to retain a history for roots so I'm gonna to have to do this again by hand uh, arch x86 Okay, so once again I'll come out of this and this one and go back in as root and reboot and log out. Okay, got the boot logo, grub menu, and it's booting. Okay. So now we're in there. Um, is it sensors? Yeah. So basically, you can see here that the, well, I can't see that. Nuvoton one has come up with anything. Um, maybe it's got nothing to report that's important unless it's this particular one. Uh, but you can see the NVMe sensor is reporting the temperature of the um, hard disk, which is 24 degrees. And then the core temperature is showing the temperatures of the individual cores on the CPU. So that shows that they're actually working correctly and there are other programs for example I think there's one called hard info that's part of GNOME I think which can display this information and it would need LM sensors as well so I imagine via Mesa or maybe through the other drivers um, this could possibly display or other tools could just possibly display the GPU temperature as well which is probably why it's a dependency So that's LM sensors done. Um, right, I've tidied that up, that's good. Yeah, this sensors file, I think this is the one that got written to automatically. Yeah, this is what was created. So you can adjust this sometimes. Um, some systems I've had where there's quite a number of sensors uh, the names are wrong or they're in the wrong order. So by editing this file, you can either, it might say sensor one and you might work out that it's, you know, a sensor for a particular device. So you can change the label, for example, here to a specific label to make the um, appearance of sensors put something more meaningful. Um, so, for example, you know, you could possibly change this if this is a title to, you know, um, root drive or something like that, root disk, something like that. So you can make it uh, configure this and configure the layout and so on. Right, so that's LM sensors done. Nettle we've got, Valgrind what we'll do. There's a patch here for some demos to prove that Mesa is working. So it looks like we're ready to build Mesa almost. We've got some more kernel configuration to look at. So let's go back to that. Okay, so. We need to go first to device drivers, graphic support, there it is, and well, we've already got the direct rendering manager because we've had to check that for something else. And 
content it's got for various graphics card or graphics driver so for radio and you need to select those options if you're going to use the nuvo driver for nvidia cards you need to select that for i915 we need to select the intel and then of course it's already set we've already checked this um for sw rest now i'm not sure if this does need to be set but it is a software renderer so it would be um slow so i'm going to leave that blank and for svga it's got there as well uh, DRM drive for VMware virtual GPU, which is that one there. Uh, let's see what it says. This corresponding Mesa Gallium 3D driver name is provided as comment for the configuration entries. If you don't know the Mesa Gallium 3D driver for your GPU, see the 3D Gallium 3D Mesa 3D Gallium 3D drivers below. Let's have a look at that. All right, okay. So for Intel, the Gallium driver is going to be either i915, Crocus, or Iris. Um, so I need to find out which one of the three it is for me. Right. Um, so Iris is Intel GPU shipped with Broadwell or newer. So that's what I'll be using. Crocus is for GMA series. And Intel HD GPUs prior to Broadwell at i915. So all I need to provide is Gallium drivers equal Iris. The looks of it. Right, yeah, it does say that they may, may require firmware for some of these drivers. So I might have to install the firmware for uh, the Intel driver. Selecting config DRM radium or GPU AMD GPU is not as yes is not recommended because the kernel must load firmware. For software rest, config DRM VGAM is not strictly needed but recommended as an optimization. All right, okay. DRM, so it's a virtual gem provider. That's that one. It doesn't say what it optimizes. I'll add it into the kernel anyway. I'll, I'll try not to, I'll try and build without the software rasterizer, but we'll see if it needs to be, then at least it'll be in the kernel. So that's the kernel setup for my hardware. Um, so once again, we need to build the kernel to take those changes. And once again, luckily it was a quick build. So mount the boot again. Yep, there is no history, so CP arch x86 underscore boot VM CP system dot map boot system dot map and CP dot config boot config. Um, I think I might create a little script to do this because I'm sure I'm going to have to be doing this a few more times. Uh, 
Echo. Mount boot to a file called install.sh. Append that command. In fact, I should chain these together to make sure they all work. That command and that command. So if I So I'll do end end. Do it like this, it's a bit more obvious what's going on. And make modules install. Mount boot right, so I'll just change it to executable. Uh, Install.sh. So if I unmount boot, I should be able to run that. Yep, that's worked. So that means it saves me typing all those commands each time. Do a kernel upgrade. Um, Yeah, I suppose all I need to do now is to come out of this. I'll log back in as root and do a reboot and log out once more. Wait for the PC to reboot. Okay, there's the logo, the grub prompt. And the login prompt has appeared, so I can log back in. Uh, not Linux this time, it's BMFS. And if I do your name minus A, I can check that the version number has gone up. You can see it's number eight previously. If we can see anywhere, yeah, there it goes. Kernel number eight is ready, so that proves that we've got the most recent kernel we built is installed and has been loaded. So let's. Oh, we haven't even downloaded Mesa yet. So let's copy the link, paste. And a patch. This patch will give us a couple of demos which we can use to test functionality when we've got the GUI up. Check that OpenGL is actually active and working. So, do we need to rebuild Mesa? Let's put that in and Look like we will need to. No. Okay, that's good. 
So let's extract XVF. Okay, so I apply the patch to get these demos installed. And then we need to create the temporary build directory. Now, in my experience in past, this can be a bit iffy getting this going with the right options, um, trying to select the right drivers and so on. So we'll see how we go. So the first thing we need to do is to select the Gallium drivers, auto. Let's see what it says about auto. Either it will install everything or try to work out what is needed. All right, so auto does select everything for x86 platform um, so I'm going to set this to iris and hope that's all that's needed platforms So X11 and Wayland, I would assume as it's blank, it will select both, but we might have to check the status of the configuration at the end. Hopefully it will print something up. Vulcan drivers. Right, so it says here an empty list is in order to remove the need for these dependencies. So um our oh, platforms is the one above right they're not in the same order so x11 wayland that's good that's okay that's what we need valgrind disabled because we haven't got it lib unwind disabled disables the usage but we installed it didn't we yeah so we can get rid of the lib unwind disabled line and see if the configuration works with that. Right, so that's promising. So Vulcan drivers are turned off as it suggests. Um, so we're getting OpenGL, ES12, and a shared GL API. DRI, GLX enabled. So X11 and Wayland plus some other platforms. It's not mentioning, oh yes, there it is. Drivers is Iris it's going to build for. So that looks good. So now let's run make, uh, sorry, Ninja. And wait for this to take a couple of minutes, I think this one. Okay, that went quite smoothly. I uh, wonder if the uh, instructions have improved over time, a bit more descriptive. Um, 
I have had problems sometimes building these are just little niggly problems and never known quite what's going on so that's good uh, we can test the results three tests related to meson uh, mesa intel are known to fail Okay, six five tests passed. So now I can install. And some documentation. So that's Misa finished with. So I mustn't shut this down because this is the tab we're building xorg on still so hopefully we can advance and have xorg with a GUI working quite soon but before that we've got to build libva um, let's move that on to the next one rebuild libva now So extract it again. And just copy this. I need to just realize copy this to my spreadsheet put down that it's been rebuilt um, so that's the build done just install it again and that's done Shut that down. Now we can have another go at this libvd power vagl. Now I'd expect this to work because we have got the OpenGL driver in, and that's what it seemed to be complaining about. Um, So this needs to be rebuilt after graph is in text live. So let's extract it again. Lib uh, VD power VA. Yeah, it was built okay now. Okay, we've got 10 tests failed out of 11. Got a seg fault. That's interesting. Don't know why that would happen. Indivex 1.1. Uh, let's try that again. Yeah, it's behaved same. Um, not sure why that would. Oh, sorry, the test must be run from an Xorg environment. Okay. So, um, so I need to add that in and rebuild after graph is 
text live and from within Xorg. Okay, to get those tests. So for now, it'll be installed to take what we've got. Fine. To allow VD Power to find lib VD Power VAGL set an environment variable as the root user. So let's see if this exists at the moment. Okay, it does, yeah. So if we recap cut that now. Oh, that said permission denied. Okay. Oh, is that because it's a redirection? Maybe it's just become root. Let's copy this command again. Copy this one again. Yeah, that's better. Okay, so that's done for now. So we can carry on building the Xorg libraries or the Xorg tools, if you like, and carry on with X bitmaps. So we've probably installed nearly 200 packages, um, almost 200 in the midst of building Xorg. All right, so let's tidy this up. And this is Xbit Maps. Straightforward and sudo mighty make install. That's done. Next, Xorg applications. So, as you can see, effectively by default, because we've been installing other stuff, um, we've got all those dependencies already installed. So this is another one with several packages that need to be downloaded and built. So we put this steering file in, run these commands to fetch and verify those files. So they've all checked OK. Now let's add this function in to allow us to install the packages. Start up a new bash environment and install all the packages with this command here, or this set of commands. Wait for them to build.
Okay, so those have all built. Let's exit the bash environment we started. Um, unless you've installed optional dependencies, remove an undocumented script which is reported to be broken. Optional dependencies. And if you wish to try to run the undock, right, so we need to remove that because we haven't installed that. So that's done. Move on to Xcursor themes. So I go back to our source. We explicitly install Xcursor themes in user instead of Xorg prefix so non Xorg desktop environments can find them. Okay. And install it. So now move on to Xorg fonts. I'm not sure if there was a to do on this. Oh, yes, librsvg rebuild after xorg fonts. Okay, so let me pull that up next to remind me. And you can see here, just in this chapter alone, we've installed probably about a quarter or so of the libraries. So this one, oh yes, for testing, that's right. Um, many people want to install other TTF or OTF fonts in addition to or instead of these. Some listed here. Okay. So let's start by creating another steering file. Again, download them. We'll copy the as root function again, even though it may be installed, this might be slightly different possibly for these packages. Start another bash environment, which will escape on an error and build the packages. And that's done. Let's exit. And when all of the fonts have been installed, the system must be configured so that font config can find the true type fonts. Since the fonts are outside the default search path of several packages, if XOR prefix is not user, make sim links to the XOR true type font directories in user share fonts by running the following commands as you do root user. So if you remember, this is where we installed our um, fonts. And you can see there, there's one directory called X11, which has an OTF and a TTF directory, where obviously those type of fonts are expected to be installed. And you can see there's one in the OTF and there's several in the TTF directory. Um, so what this does, it creates a sim link from these directories. Um, sorry, from the XORG to, to these directories. So if we run this as the root, you'll see now that from 
points. X11. We've now got a couple of extra directories, X11 OTF and TTF, which points at those two directories. So that is that file, not file, uh, suite of packages done. So I'll move back and I've got to do librsvg next. So we'll extract librsvg. Um, right, let's copy this. I can't remember if there's anything to change or not. So we've got Valor, we'll leave that in. This override installing. This override ensures installing the aircraft option. Oh, right, yes, that's right. All we needed is this one. So it doesn't matter that we're going to override the location because we're not going to install it. So I'll just put that in. So build developer documentation, no, so that's good. Let's build it. We've got all these options that have been found, so that's good. Okay, that's done. I'm just updating my spreadsheet to show that this has been rebuilt. And now that's built, I can run make check. Okay, that looks like it's still 63 tests there. I'm sure that's what the was tested before, but um, yeah, I'm not sure. Um, at least we've tested it with Xorg fonts installed, so that's the main thing. So let's install. That failed. Is this what happened before? Yes, it is. I'm not sure why this is. So I just put in the path equals dollar path, and let's fix that. So wait for that to finish.
Okay, that's done. So that's lib rsvg installed. And I could move on to, let's tighten that up first of all. Move on to X keyboard config. And just download the package. So this is a straightforward installation and ninja install and that's that done. Next is X Wayland. So I've got a few dependency here. Um, we've installed most of them already. We've got one called libepoxy. It's required, requires Mesa, which obviously we've got, so we can install that. So, we haven't got Doxygen installed, so we're not going to build the documentation. And we can run some tests. So, four ran and passed, and 13 was skipped for some reason. done so it's Libby Poxy what else have we got Xorg legacy fonts only BDF to PCF for building fonts required for the tests So we're only going to install these fonts here. So once again, we've got a steering file. Download them. Recreate this function. Start bash again and build and install the packages. Okay, that's done. Let's exit that shell. And that looks like that's done. So that was Xorg Legacy. So now we can build X Wayland. Just check that libg crypt. I think we've done that one. Yep. Right. So let's have a look. Any more command explanations? No, nothing else to put in. We can copy this all in one go.
Okay, so that's built. Now it does say that building a test framework needs some work. First, Western brings in several dependencies, but the number can be reduced by disabling unneeded features. The Meson command for a stripped down build of Western is shown in upstream continuous integration build. Running the test involves downloading two other frameworks in addition to the mentioned optional dependencies. So we haven't got these two, so it looks like I would say doing this will probably fail. Um, let's do it just to see what happens. Uh, just for the record. Well, I think this is uh, has hung because I'm looking at this on the terminal and I can't see that um, anything is actually happen happening. Um, So it's probably pointless, um, especially if we've got two of the dependencies not running or not installed rather. So I think I'm just going to abandon this and just go straight for the install. Um, if X server is not installed and you do not plan to install it later, you can install the XBFP package uh, from this package. So we are going to install X server, so I won't bother with that. I'll just tidy this up. And that's that package complete. Um, So I'll move on to XORG server, which is next, in fact. 
we need some dependencies here like this fop again let's have a look at this i'm sure this is still not something i want to install at the moment oh yeah apache so java is be a good one to install early as well so it's fop text live java graphics and they're all kind of graphics related which is why i've been putting them off um, So a lot of these are runtime requirements. Right, so saying if you've got support with your graphics card through Mesa, then nothing else should be done. Otherwise, you need to find a kernel configuration for the DRM, DRM drive of the GPU and enable it, uh, especially virtual machine managers. And there's some other information there. So, um, well, recommended let's get these up because we can build them at some point fop needs to be reinstalled of this one right so that's all there is e login d needs pulk it at runtime that needs duct tape okay ZSH is an optional installation. Xorg input needs lib input, which needs lib fdev. Oh. And mtdev. GTK plus for a GUI viewer. Wacom PY passing. Okay, there's lots to do here then. Right, let's get rid of some of these then. So ACPID next, that hasn't got any dependencies. So let's come out of this directory, fetch this file. So if we've got any options, no. So we'll build this and straight away install it and configure it. Follow brief example, suspend the system when the laptop limit is, it is closed while I'm on the, and it requires PM utils. Have a quick look at that. XLTO HD Palm. Right, that's something I might leave for now. So you might want to do that if you're on a laptop. I'm not on a laptop, so. Um, it's not really appropriate, but there is a boot script to start this off. So let's go into that and run make install ACPID. And we can start it. And that's done. So 
this is lib add dev. So let's install that next. So you can see there's some kernel settings needed here. So let's become the root and set them. So device drivers, input device support, which is there. Generic interface I've got and event interface, which is already set, so that's okay. If you want to test this package with full coverage, following options are needed as well. So input device support, generic input layer, miscellaneous devices, we need to check and go into that and then select user level driver support. And there it is there. So I'll just set that as a, a module. So exit. Oh, it says it needs to be inserted for the test run. So I'll actually build it in because I'll probably forget to, t to insert it. So let's build that. Okay, and we'll run our little script. That's done, so I should be able to uh, come out of this red login as root and do a reboot and log out. And again, wait for the machine to reboot. Okay, there's the grub menu. And we're up. Let's just check the revision of the kernel again. Yep, number nine, that's what it was. So we can now build this. lib fdev okay so this needs to be tested inside a graphical session so we can't actually test this at the moment so rebuild after GUI installed and I imagine if I run this I'll probably get some horrible errors like I did before oh we've got three passes um, but three have have been skipped obviously because there's no GUI so that's something at least Ninja install and that's okay for now. And the next one got its PY passing. So it's got one optional dependency, but it's outside of the BLFS scope. It says it needed for tests, but 
well we can see how we go it might be like the last one where we get a few skips that we wouldn't have got otherwise or it might just be that it collapses with a load of errors everywhere all oh, right it does say assume py test is installed but the other optional dependencies dependency is not we can test with the so it looks like it's downloading that railroad diagrams Yep, to do the testing. Okay, that's done. All oh, passed. Wacom. Okay, so this is specifically for Wacom tablets or Wacom tablets. Um, if you've got that, uh, let's see how onerous this would be. If it's a small package, we've got Glib, we've got Gobject Introspection. We haven't got that. GUDev, that's what we need. Pcap, we've got Valor. Those two, but not blues. I cal. API documentation. We've got that one. We've got that one, I think. Yep, we have. So we could put this in. Um, Docutils, I think we've got that one. Yep. So let's bring this up again. Uh, yeah, there are some of those other packages that probably be installed. So I'd say it's probably harmless to install. This particular package probably won't be used, but I think I'm pretty sure I recognize a lot of these other uh, dependencies. So I think it's probably just worth doing them now. So you mock dev. GU dev is required. So we need to build GU dev first. So that mute you mock dev has got it. So let's just copy that. And then put no rebuild after you mock dev to allow us to have full testing. Copy link. So I'm not going to build the API documentation, so I won't put that option in. So I'll just copy and paste those commands, test it. No test defined. Okay, because we haven't got umock dev, presumably. Install the package and tidy it up. Um, so I'll leave that open because we'll be coming back to that soon. Umock dev requires libgu dev, which it's got now. Libpcap requires blues, requires libical, and this requires graphs, but it's only for the API documentation. I'm not going to install that, so I don't consider that to be a dependency. We've got everything else. 
So let's do this one next. Package may occasionally fail when building multiple processors, so bear that in mind. Oh, I've got minus J1 there, so that's probably why. Is there any other? Oh, yes, there's some other options there. So let's create the build directory, copy the CMake command, and just check to see what else we've got here. True, VPA true, and I won't bother with that because I don't think I would need that. So the defaults are fine. And we'll build it with make minus J1. Looks like it's not going to take too long anyway at this rate. Okay, so yeah, that wasn't too long at all. Uh, we're not going to build the API, so we'll just make install. And that's that one done. So Blues provides a Bluetooth protocol stack. I'm not going to go into building the Bluetooth. Um, it's quite involved as you can see it's not hard actually i have done it on one of my videos so if you can track that one down one of my previous uh, blfs videos um, there's quite a lot of settings in the kernel as you can see but it's fairly straightforward um, but other than that i'm not going to be bothering to configure that so let's put this in Fetch the packages. Okay, so we'll skip down here to the patch. Hopefully this build won't fail or test or anything fail because kernels aren't, the kernel settings aren't set, but it is a possibility. Um, so enable library. Right, we can remove disable man pages because we've got docutils installed. So we can build the man pages. And disable system D we need because we're not running that. And let's build it. Make check. Okay, all passed. Install. Install the main configuration file as the root, and there's no API documentation to install, so that's that. Um, I'll put the config files in. In case I do come round to doing something with it. And let's try installing the boot scripts. They may fail as the kernel's not been configured, or I doubt if it's been configured, in which case I'll, I'll remove them. 
put let's put them in and start it up. Okay, yes, yeah, so it has failed. So something's not worked there, so I will remove these now. Uh, so let's do these back to front. That's interesting, that file there. Let's have a quick look at that. Oh, is that one of these we just set up, was it? No, it wasn't. Of course not, it's what just got installed. So it could be that this device doesn't even exist. It's, it's something like that that's failed. So yes, remove that. And I think that's it. So tidy that up and shut that down. Lib PCAP leads lib NL. Okay, let's copy this. So there's an option to disable CLI if you don't want to install the CLI tools. Uh, might be useful to have, so I won't put that in. Wait for this to build. And make install. Oh, what's happened there? Some reason the output of the screen wasn't working. How strange. So the make has definitely completed. Uh, let's try that again. And we don't want the API documentation, so that's built. So libp cap now. So straightforward configure and make. If you want to disable installing the static library, use this said. Um, well, it doesn't say normally they don't install static libraries, but it's got the fact that the static library is there. So I'm going to leave that in, I think. is not explicitly said to remove it. So that's libpcap. 
So now you mock dev, we've got all the dependencies installed. So we've got GTK doc installed, but we don't want the API, so we won't add that in. Just do the commands that are in the book as they are. Ninja test one test needs to be run in the next session. Well, I don't know which one it was, but we've got seven tests and they've all passed. There's none skipped, so. Um, maybe that used to be the case. So that's built. So now we're going to rebuild libgu dev. So let's reflect that in the document before I forget. And let's extract it. Okay, yeah, we'll just copy and paste this. Run the tests. Uh, can't, to be quite honest, remember the results. Oh, yes, it didn't find any tests. That's right. Didn't find anything to do. So clearly, UMOC dev is installed and working now. We've got four passes. So that's all very good. Ninja install, and we're done. So just a little diversion just to install this one package but as I say most of those other ones if not all of them uh, will be required anyway so it's not too onerous this, this is the only extra bit that has to be done this package and as I say it's a small package so I don't think it's uh, particularly bad Right, it does say that um, the tests are disabled because, well, it needs PY tests, but these two here, which are not installed to work properly. So just copy it as it is. We can run Ninja test to see what would happen. It might just return with an error. It might just say nothing tested. Oh, it's actually it's tested one of them. And that's it. So it's something at least. Ninja install. And that's done. So it's lib wacom or wacom empty dev. done so straightforward configure and make and done so back to xorg input and we're going to do lib input and this will require a rebuild after gck3 has been built for a GUI event viewer which sounds like it might be quite useful so rebuild after gtk plus v2 
version three. So we know we've got this set because we've looked at that previously. Installation of live input. So let's create the build directory. Copy this setup and cross reference it with the options here. So this is the option we'll have to change after we've built GTK 3, uh, plus 3 for visual debug helper for lib input. So again, say so could be useful. So we'll probably, if you want to run the full test, remove dtest from these and command above, please read current configuration. Right, so we could probably do that because we've got the kernel already configured. So let's remove that to run a fuller set of tests. We've got libwacom, wacom. Right, we haven't got either of these docs are not going to install anyway, so we can ignore that. So I'll run that. That's good. So now let's compile it. That's done. So it says you want to run the remove it. If you have enabled the full test, you can run the main test as the root user by executing ninja test. So let's become the root user and run ninja test. So we've got Mesa internal test. One test fails on Wayland. We've actually got 19 failures. RJ units, that's interesting. Yeah, so this is actually failing because Java, I presume, is not installed. It doesn't mention Java there anywhere. But that looks like what it is. So I'll just put possibly Java as needed. Right, so let me install this now. Build the documentation or install it. So that's that one done. So now lib input driver one dot three dot zero. Uh, requires XORG server. 
Oh yes, that's right. This is run time, so we can't do this at the moment. Uh, duct tape. Uh, we can do this one. Build it with these commands. And install it. With that command, that's done. Whole kit we have uh, right recommended e long in D, but we haven't installed that yet. And this needs whole kit runtime, so we can install whole kit after e log in D. So let's do ZSH next. a document download so optional PCRE and Valgren so we haven't done PCRE so let's do that first Right, so we'll copy all of this and add in this enable JIT for just in time compiling. So we'll build that. And run some tests. All looks good. So let's make install and it's done. Back to ZSH. We'll extract it. Uh, install the optional documentation cap gdbm and pcre so we just need to add in the pcre option to enable that means we downloaded it and installed it And build it.
Okay. Uh, sorry, we need to do these option uh, the commands next. Okay, it says if you've got text live installed, it didn't mention it previously, so we can put rebuild after text live to get that documentation. Let's now run make check. Right, well that says uh, it's completed successfully, one was skipped, so it's time to install. And install the optional documentation. And that's done. So that's that one. Now we go to e login D. Yep, I think we're ready to install this now. some kernel configurations so let's check that so file systems I notify support has been set pseudo file systems which is there tempfs virtual file system support that's set and posix access control list that's set then we need to go into the cryptographic api cryptographic core or helper and user space cryptographic algorithm configuration needs to be set and hash algorithms as well which is under user space interface Which is under cryptographic API. 
user space interface hash algorithms. So I need to now exit and build those changes in. Okay, so this looks like it's building quite a bit of the kernel, or rebuilding rather. Right, so now I'm going to install that into the system and once again I'll do the sequence of logging off these terminals or logging out rather reconnect as root and reboot and log out and wait for another reboot. Okay, so it's rebooting. And the server's up. I can go back in. start to build the login D. So let's create this build first, build directory, copy the means and setup. Let's check the options. Doctor, C group controller, Dbus policy, Man's auto HTML auto. So we could add that in, it will automatically build as it sees necessary. Right, so default kill user processes equals false determines whether the processes of a user should be killed when the user logs out. So the default is true, but this defeats the traditional user screen or Tmux. So I'm going to add that in because I occasionally use screen. Um, we can leave a session running even though you've logged out. Um, and what that's saying is that those sessions will be killed when you log out unless you set this option. So let's put that in. That seems to have worked okay. So now let's build. That's done. Let's test the results. A few tests are skipped if not run with root privilege. Two tests named that require machine ID symlink. Okay, so they shouldn't fail because I think we did that. And yeah, we've got one failure. So let's try running this as root. I've got two failures that time. That's strange. Okay, let's try running just as root like that. And ninja test. No, well, that's strange. It's actually worse. Um, it said it would be.
So this one looks like it's just to do with documentation. This is one of the tests that says a fail that didn't, and the other one didn't fail. And the one that fails here, again, is that dbus docs ref, uh, fresh. So it could be, oh, I don't know if it's anything to do with these un, ones we haven't got. Um, so the first three for runtime, these are for the man pages, and we've got those installed, so yeah, I'm not sure what that's about. So let's do an install. Let's see if we can see if this does do an installation of the documentation. Yeah, it looks like it's doing HTML there, so that worked. And the man pages, so yeah, I don't know why that test failed at all. The installation's gone all right. And let's do these two here. That's okay. Configuration. You may wish to disable. Okay, so it says here about doing that as well. So we'll put that in in addition to that other switch we did. Each user will need to register as a session using PAM. So the system session file needs to be modified. So run the following commands as the root user. And that's it. So let's now tidy that up. And shut that down. We can now go to uh, well, it looks like that was requiring lib input. E logging D, all right, poll kit, yeah. Right, we could build this JS. It says it can be used in place of duct tape, which we've built anyway. Um, what was from one time? Oh, their runtime dependencies. Okay, that's not a problem. Uh... Right, so we do have to tell it to use that JavaScript engine instead of the duct tape one. I don't know what the advantage is. Um, let's see if... the... Um, JS is used by anything else that might make it worth Installing, right, I need to expand that. Uh, okay, it takes a bit of S12. Oh, this is within the remote machine. Uh, Let's do let's extract this one where it's all on one page. Um, 
Let's log back into there. And if we refresh this now. Oh, I'll click on the wrong one. Yep. Yeah. And what I'll do is I'll search for that JS dash. So there it is in the index. So it's 102. Right, yes, it is a requirement by GJS, so I'm going to install it. Um, now, and then that will be done. It looks like GJS, that was a dependency. Oh, right, and they needed these, yeah. Okay, yeah, so I'll just minimise that for now. And we'll pull that one up. Install that and download it. So as you can see, it's actually pulled out of a Firefox archive. Um, we're not building this on a 32-bit system, so we can skip that. Unlike most other packages in BLFS, the instructions below require you to untie the Firefox download. Extraction of the tarball will reset the permissions of the current directory to 0755 if you have permissions to do that. If you do this in a directory where the sticky bit is set, such as temp, it will end with error messages. This does not finish this does finish with a non-zero status, but it does not mean there's a real problem. Do not untar as a root user in the directory where the sticky bit is set. That will unset it. Well, I think the BLFS sources directory is probably already set to 0755. There's something there if you're installing some root to do. But apart from that, just got to check the permissions when it's finished downloading and then extract it and ensure the permissions haven't changed in case that affects anything. Okay, so that's it extracted. So so look at the status of this. So it's actually set to seven seven five for some reason. Um, seven five five would be better probably, but let's extract this then. So Firefox. And 
let's recall that command. Yes, it has changed it to 755. That's strange. But anyway, that's probably preferable. So I'm not really too bothered about that. So let's change it to Firefox. Make an object temporary build directory. Let's copy this configure command and check to see if there's any options we might want to tweak here. So that's required by GJS. Okay, so it does actually say the package that uses this. With the system, we want that. Enable red read line, we would probably want that. Disable gem alloc. Okay, that's good. Debug symbols we don't want. So there's nothing much else to configure. Um, interesting, it's mentioned about some C flags there. Oh, it's for 32 bit. Okay, so we can configure with those options. Okay, and we'll I'll time this because it might take more than a few minutes. Build it.
Right, so that looks like that's finished. We've got 45,000 tests there. So now let's do a similar thing to what we did with the first test, except this one's called JIT. And we've got none that failed. Oh, no, I've named that wrong. Yeah, we've got none that failed, so that's good. Uh, an issue with the installation process causing running product. Right, okay, so we're not upgrading when this file shouldn't exist at the moment because we haven't installed it, but there's no harm in checking. Just to make sense of things, yes, it's not there. So now it's time to become the root and install this package. And as simple as that. And that's it. So let's clean up Firefox. Close that tab down. We go back and we need dbus mock for testing. Looks like we've got dbus python. Let's check. No, perhaps we haven't. I'll do hyphen bus. Rebuild off the bus Python. Yeah, we've done that, so that's fine. So we can install this package now. So extract, oops, extract it, and install it with this command. There's no test suite. That's all we need to do. So that's dbus mock. Back to polkit. And we can now install this. All right, I haven't tied it up. So let's move polkit back up one. Move back up one and remove the bus mock directory, extract pull kit and start the build. So there should be a dedicated user for this. So sudo to the root, create the group and user. Um, so if using JS102, so we might as well use it, even though we've installed duct tape, it was only a quick installation. It's not too important. So I'll make the following change. Install Polkit using the following commands. So let's create the build directory. These on command, let's check these options. So test is true. So this is the option we need to add in to use the Mozilla JavaScript engine. Oh, this type of, uh, use this switch if you did not create the etc LFS release files. Right, so we did that. So we don't need to add that in. The alls FW shadow, this switch now is the package to use the shadow rather than the Linux PAM authentication. Do use it if you have not installed Linux PAM. So we have, so we don't need to add that. Introspection equals false. We've got introspection installed. 
I'm not certain that I don't need it, so I'll leave that as it is. Man pages, we want that, so we'll leave that as dman is true. Um, don't know if you'd need example programs or not. I guess we can put that in just to exercise the compile a bit more. Um, yeah, example's true. Otherwise, if it was a machine I'd be using properly, I probably wouldn't install that, I wouldn't know what to do or how to use them. So that's installed. Let's run, sorry, built. Let's run Ninja test. It's failed with one of them. Um, be sure the deep says debus demon is running, which it is. So I'm not sure why that one failed. Let's these on logs test log dot text. So it's the last one that failed. No module name D must mock, and yet we've installed that. Um, don't know if this would fix it. Uh, that's interesting. We definitely installed it. Uh, let's try building it and installing it once more. What was it called? Python demo smart. Extracted the wrong package. No Python debus mock. All right, and I extracted it. I did the pip wheel and the installation. And it says requirement already satisfied debus python. Oh, have I been looking at the wrong instructions? Yes, I think I did. So I've been looking at deep so I really should install debus python again in case I overwrote something with that command I'm not sure if I have done I think the screen scrolled down yes to this point here so that's what I need to do is python debus uh, no sorry debus python So I need to build this again. I'm not sure if that message that gets put out when you install is telling you that it's recognized as something there and it doesn't do anything or it's recognized as something there and does do something. Um, either way, I'm concerned the fact that I installed this option with Dbus Python for the mock uh, Python, Dbus Python. So that's why I've rebuilt this because of that mistake. Uh, in case it does overwrite it each time you do that change. So I've updated that. I'll go back to the correct area. This is, I suppose, a problem with having all these modules on the same page. Uh, maybe I should have paid a 
little bit more attention to what I was copying and pasting. So now if I go back into this Python Dbus mock and install this with the correct instructions, or rather, yeah, install it with the correct instructions. Right, yes, now I haven't got that message this time. Tidy that up. Now if I go back to where I was, pull kit, and rerun ninja test, hopefully all five will pass. And indeed, yes, it's passed this time. So that was a mistake on my part. So now we can install it. And that's pulk it finished. So this has got to be done after Xorg server. So let's build that next. Xorg server, so we should have everything here. Anything that's missing that I want to install later is FOP. So I'll put this into my list with a rebuild after FOP message and fetch the package and an optional patch. So with the removal of the XF86 video drivers, the tear free option is no longer functional. To work around this, Upstream has added a tear free option to the default mode setting driver. This patch backports this feature. Apply this patch if you're going to use Xorg in an environment without a compositor. Okay, so I think that could be useful because initially we will be using TWM So kernel, yeah, we've looked at these already. This is if you haven't got support in Mesa. Um, suggest these might be <clears throat> useful settings to install as a fallback. So I'm just going to check them. I'm not too concerned if they're there or not. Um, so we need to go to device drivers, firmware drivers, um, mark feature, so that's already set that one. Then we go to graphics support and direct rendering manager is already set and Simple frame buffer is already set. I'm not sure if these were set somewhere else, either in Linux from scratch or early on in beyond Linux from scratch. I can't remember now. So that's all right. We've got nothing to do there anyway, but they are set in case we need them. Um, there's some information there about configuring the resolution. Um, when the uh, frame buffer is booted, so that's for the visa frame buffer if that's installed. So installation of the Xorg server. So I'm going to put this patch in because we'll need it for TWM. And we'll create a build directory. And the setup 
and we'll check to see if there's anything to set here. Probably not. Ensure that the grammar module is needed for building the mode setting driver, which replaces the traditional. So they've got that set. Build this SUID root wrapper for legacy. So we're not using legacy. System D login equals false. So we don't want that allowing X org server to work without having pan modules. So we've got that, so we don't need that option. And Zephyr, if it's dependence is a met, well, I'm not installing that as far as I know. Um, oh, although we've got the options all for to build Zephyr. I'm not even sure what that is. Let's have a look. Placing Zephyr with the Xfire dummy. It only uses software rendering. So I was thinking of enabling it, but it might not work anyway if you could use it. But um, let's try enabling it and see what happens. Uh, it may not build. It may be that the X window doesn't even work possibly. Well, it says it's got it set to build, so it may well work. I guess if we try and use it, it probably won't. So let's wait for this to build. Okay, so as built, sudo mon c su, it says or recommends to run ld config before we run the tests. Make sure the new library is loaded. Uh, okay, yeah, it has skipped the Zephyr Glamour test, and that is probably because uh, I don't think there's any software driver uh, that's installed to allow it to run. I uh, seem to remember I deliberately didn't install that. So let's now install the package. So that is complete. So next is Xorg input drivers, which we've got up here anyway, just to install one more of the drivers. Um, XORG lib input. So let's do that next. Now that we've got the dependencies in, let's tidy this up. And copy the file, the package address. straightforward instructions to build and test and install all good let's install it and that's done so I can shut that tab down now and we can move on to start building the windowing manager tabbed window manager it stands for TWM so there's no dependencies of except for obviously an XORG server <clears throat> so 
So we build it with these instructions. And install it. And that's done. And we've got a couple of applications. First one's really useful. Allows us to do some work within the environment. Um, we've got the Deja Vu fonts, if you remember, installed. The link's not there because we didn't jump directly to that point in the page. But as you can see, that link is changed color. Emacs I don't use, so I won't be installing that. Um, so apart from that, I think we can get Xterm installed. In fact, I, I don't know anybody that uses Emacs, to be quite honest. I'm sure there must still be people out there that use it. Um, I believe it's still quite popular. Now, there is one useful option with Xterm that would be nice if they included it in the instructions here because um, when you do configure, oh, not like that though, configure help, um, if I can find it, can't see it now oh yes there it is enable toolbar what it gives you on each window is a little menu with uh, access to options to configure the uh, terminal um, otherwise you you can't or I don't know of no way of actually setting them apart from setting them in a configuration file um, but it allows you to you know adjust the font size or reverse video and so on and a load of other options I've never used so that's that's quite a useful switch to add into the configure command. So I'll put in this first said. In fact, I'll start again because I ran the configure command by accident. So let's put that said in. Then we'll copy this configure command in, and then if I just scroll back, uh, enable toolbar. So I'll copy that and paste that as well. That'll enable that toolbar. Um, as I say, it's a pretty useful thing to have. Okay, so now we can run make to build it. And install it. Okay, that looks okay. Uh, configuring X term. Yeah, they've got some information here. I don't think they used to have this, but this is quite good for configuring it. So these defaults will always happen, but the toolbar allows you to override whatever the defaults are, or yeah, the defaults in Xterm or defaults that are configured here. So it's good to have this. And it says there's two ways of configuring Xterm, these two files. So we'll do this now um, and if you like find for example that you prefer a bigger font then obviously you could change this um, I might actually change the font size to be a little bit bigger 10 might be now I'll leave it at the moment and then I can come back and change it um, I remember that's in app defaults. Yeah, 
So that's x term. Let's tidy that up. And move on to x clock. So this is like a toy, a desktop toy, just shows a, a clock on the screen. So it's not necessary at all, but it, it just shows another application, how it can work. So quite straightforward build. And install it. Uh, just make install. And that's done. Now I'll divert a little bit from BLFS here, which is not the intention really, but I've just remembered of a, a well, it is a toy actually called x eyes that you always always used to see um don't really see it anymore and it's not in the blfs book but it's a simple program we could probably just install it the same instructions as we've just seen for x clock uh let's see i should sure have searched for this would have been quicker Yes, there it is, XIZE. That looks like that's the latest version. So I'm going to copy that link address, fetch it. I'll close that down and I'm going to use the same instructions. To build this as I did for X clock. And so do want to see make install. And that's that. So that's just a little extra. As I say, it's a toy, so it's not necessary. Oh. Try and copy this correctly. Put that into my running order. Okay, that's done. Let's tidy up. And move on to X in it. Paste that in, download that. Okay, we've got all the dependencies plus an additional one. So let's build it. As the root user, install and load the new libraries. So no, if starting XOR from the command line, which we'll be doing initially, the default instructions above start above start XOR on the current virtual terminal. It may be convenient to see XOR and associated application messages on the current virtual terminal, normally TTY one, and start the graphical environment on the first available unused virtual terminal, TTY seven. To do this, set the SUID bit on the XORG application as a root user. So I'll do that. At this point, you can start XORG on the virtual terminal with StartX. So I'll try that. You won't be able to see that, but um, very soon I'll boot into that to show it working. But this will be a, a good test. Um, let's 
So I'm just logging in. So I'll have to type this in by hand, obviously. Um, so start X. So yes, I've I've got the desktop come up with the TWM and all the um, windows as I'd expect. So that works okay. I'll come back out of that, and I'll be showing you that in a very short while. Uh, to automatically start XORG on the first available virtual terminal. Modify the StarTech script as the root user. So I'm not going to, after this change of virtual terminals, not to be specified on the StarTex command line. Okay, so I'll, I will put that in. Um, to automatically start XORG on the first available virtual terminal. Well, I'll leave that for a moment to see how it behaves. Uh, what I'm going to do now is to um, oops, come out of this, tidy this up. I'm going to clear this down. Oops, Let's get rid of this. Clear this down, and the next time uh, in the next video, I'll be starting up on the. Um, actual machine so that you can see it starting up or just see how it behaves on there.